Without High, North American League of Legends would be completely different. High is the NALCS's original shot caller, the league's first real leader, whose unique shot calling style and macro play got Cloud9 into the LCS and revolutionized the league itself. And years later, when Cloud9 were staring at relegation, they needed High. Because without him, the team looked lost, directionless, grasping desperately for some kind of leader to put them back together. He's basically the puppeteer of Cloud9. He is the chess master. While he'll always be known as the heart and soul of Cloud9 League of Legends, he's recently taken on a leadership role with some of the league's newer organizations. High is a League of Legends mastermind. And when his shot calling was at its peak, there was no way an NA team could beat him. That's gonna be a trip to the world championship for Cloud9! This is his story. Hai Hai Dulam was born on September 20th, 1992 in Grandville, Michigan, and took to video games along with his brothers. Hai played Warcraft 3, Counter-Strike, Dota, and WoW before discovering League of Legends in 2010. By the time he was in college, Hai was near the top of the solo queue ladder, and a hot commodity for teams looking to make a mark on the competitive scene with a star jungler. Team USA will win WCG 2010 in League of Legends as the Nexus falls! Hai formed Team No Fear, which was quickly signed by Orbit Gaming, but later turned to Reddit for funding after they left the org. Your team, formerly Orbit, now Reddit Nation. How did that happen? Uh, basically our owner is a scumbag, so we kind of pieced out, and uh, we went on Reddit and asked people if they could help us get here, and they sent us here. High's big personality and cocky attitude earned him a lot of fans, but the team struggled on land. Wild Turtle forced to come back up, Crapper going in with the flash, unstoppable force in the shadow ulti won't do anything as he gets crushed down, and it does not look good as Reddit Nation actually looking to push out Wicked here. They do drop down Kog'Maw, they do drop down Lemon Nation, and they will be going in for the fight. They just had to reposition themselves. They drop the inhibitor in a beautiful second game by CounterLogic Europe as they take the first matchup of Lone Star 2. After some key losses, High left for Cloud9, alongside his right-hand man, Derek Elimination Hart, and made it all the way to the first ever NALCS qualifier. <laughs> it is gonna be Cloud9 versus Man, and frankly, I think this is the best game in the group. I mean, this is definitely a very good game. We've got the highly rated X Nom Nom X Quantic now Cloud9. A million names. They've had yeah. a million names. And they're they're just everyone thinks they're gonna get all the way through. But the team fell out of the tournament in the group stage. This looks like the end for Cloud9's journey at the regionals. Azure will be moving on, Riv. And were dropped by Cloud9. They were too cocky and needed to rebuild. We learned a lot from that tournament. Let me first start off saying that. We went into that tournament expecting we were going to qualify and make it through. High switched to the mid lane, and he and Lemon eventually recruited Balls, Medios, and Sneaky to fill out the team, with High calling the shots. It was High's last chance. Since I couldn't attend school, I had one more shot to try and qualify, and I told myself if I didn't make it to that one, I would just attend school again in that summer slash fall. So I pretty much just said, if I don't qualify, I'll go back to school, and if I do, then we'll see where it takes me. High was the brains of the operation, while Lemon Nation was his right-hand man, executing his orders in the bottom lane. The rest of the players were the muscle. Together, they were the squad that stole the LCS out from under the established teams. The team cruised through the qualifier under the Quantic Gaming banner to earn an LCS spot. Quantic 3-0 going into the LCS summer split. And were quickly re-signed by Cloud9 ahead of their LCS debut. Cloud9 bulldozed their way through the 2013 NALCS summer split, going 25-3 in the regular season and swept both Team Dignitas and Team Solo mid in the playoffs. They just gotta hit the Nexus! With their eyes on the Nexus, their eyes on the summer split, completely undefeated in the series, 25-3 and three on the split. The league was young, but no team in its first season was quite as dominant as High's Cloud9. You guys are, are flying as high as can be possible in the LCS. How do you remain humble? How do you not let it get to your head? Um, 
We always just talk to each other and tell each other not to get cocky, not to get complacent, and just remember that anything can happen. It doesn't matter what, how good our record is, it just matters how good we perform each game. So as captain, I always just tell us to chill down, relax. Just, it doesn't matter our record, it doesn't matter our win streak. Just take it a game at a time as always. High was developing strategies for the team that were so far ahead of anything that North America had come up with, looking to other regions for inspiration. We, we watch the Koreans and just do what they do because they won uh, the World All-Stars thing and we think that they play the best. They brought the macro game in NA to new levels. No one saw Cloud9 coming. Over 90% win rate on the season, which is just absolutely unprecedented in the LCS. And while they couldn't quite make their strategies work at Worlds that year, the team returned to crush NA again in spring 2014. They are just absolutely taking everything they can away from TSM and the win. 17 to 9, your first game of the North American LCS in the 2014 split goes to Cloud9. C9 picked up an equally impressive 24 and 4 record in the regular season and yet another 3-0 victory over TSM in the playoffs. Top and hip turret's gone, Ball's this gonna be rejoin this trying to come in from the side. Here we go, no stuns come in from the ulti from Morgana, but there's the battle, especially on the back line. Wild Turtle gonna be locked up, two kills, make that four kills, make that almost everyone going down. Cloud9 gonna end the series 3-0. They're gonna take down the Nexus, and they're the North American champions. Wow. But that's when tragedy struck. Hai was rushed to the ER and found out that his lung had collapsed. Winning the spring split meant that Cloud9 was heading to All-Stars Paris, but Hai wasn't going anywhere. Well, this sucks. And then I started thinking about, like, hey, with this condition, the pneumothorax, am I able to go to Paris? Their first th thought is, these guys are competitors. They're like, oh my god, this guy can't go to All-Stars with us. What are we going to do? And I'm like, don't worry about that right now. Like, let's get high healthy. Collapsed lungs are life-threatening, if not treated quickly. They took out most of them on my left lung, I think. They cut out, like, this much of my lung, I don't really know. But High pulled through, even streaming League of Legends from his hospital bed while hooked up to a breathing machine. From the moment he got injured, he gave me the list of, of mids that he wanted to represent him. Throughout every single game, he was sending me messages, tell the guys this, they need to hear this. Without High, Cloud9 floundered at All-Stars, losing 2-0 to OMG in the semifinals. There is the rat, look at him getting in on the top side, seeing if he can have a go. Sneaky gonna get caught up from this one, there's the kill. Ball's the next target as he gets in the face. Lake being smashed away as he throws down the shockwave. Sun may eventually fall here, or maybe not, as they completely control our balls. Nexus throws it down, the Nexus itself is going to be focused and OMG get themselves into the finals here at the All-Star Invitational. High returned to C9 for the summer season, but the team began to struggle. Cloud9 still took first in the regular season, but they posted an 18-10 record and were tied for first with LMQ. The gap was closing. 34-minute game, Cloud9 going to take up a couple of more wins at the end of the week and they are going to be your number one team heading into the playoffs of the North American LCS. Hi, here we are again. Three splits in a row, regular season, first place. How does that feel? It feels great, but it's kind of weird because this wasn't the normal CLG, so it's kind of like a weird feeling. I don't feel like we earned it as much, but I'll still take it, I guess. And once playoffs rolled around, TSM were finally able to hand Cloud9 their first NA series loss, beating them in the grand finals 3-2. Team Solomid looking to dethrone Cloud9 as the North American champions. They lay down the ward so they have all the vision necessary. A 10-10, 40-minute game, 60,000 gold apiece on each side, and Meteos trying his damnness to stop it. And after all the tension, TSM finds the fight, and Wild Turtle goes wild right there on that last fight, outplaying Cloud9 and carrying TSM to the championship. That's the ace, that's the game. TSM goes to full five and takes down Cloud9 to be the 2014 North American champions. But Cloud9 were still great. Though younger foreign mid laners like Soren Bjergsen Bjerg and Yu Xiaowei Xiao Xian were more mechanically sound than high, he was still the mastermind behind C9's macro play 
and developed a reputation for micromanaging his players. It's really funny because I've actually played alongside High in ranked games before and in ranked fives, and he micromanages everybody. And when he's in the mindset of we're better than these guys, he's constantly telling you things like go here, do this, test that. And he's making sure that you're pushing up, going back. You always know what you need to do. So he's basically the puppeteer of Cloud9. He is the chess master. And when he's in his mindset and he's in his groove, you definitely see it. I think High shot calling became his signature. Other teams would make sweeping general calls, while High would give his players strict directions on what they should be doing. Yes, a flash. Nice. Good job, guys. Good job. 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 C9 made history that year when they became the first North American team to take a game off a Korean team at Worlds after beating Najin White Shield in the group stage. And GAs are coming up here soon as well. Not quite in 10 seconds time though, so this Baron might be a little bit delayed from both sides until they get those Guardian the Angels in position. Oh, most played! The side falls. He's going to be the focus, but he flashes. The Cocoon misses. Oh, they've got the Charmer high though. He will put down his death mark. Goon uses his oh. Gorilla low in the back. Sneaky coming around after using his QSS. He's going to be Cloud9 to win this one. They take out Watch. They That's game! That's game! That's the 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 game! They could go through a win! 51 minutes in, Cloud9 finds the amazing fight! 5 for 0 ace, nothing will stop them from winning this game! And Cloud9 takes down Shield! Nexus turret's going down and Cloud9 picking up a massive victory over Naji White Shield! C9 did it again by taking a game off of tournament favorites Samsung Blue in the quarterfinals. The turret number two will fall, Spirit helpless! They can't stop them! They're putting the damage down on the Nexus! The rest of Samsung Blue spawns! They're gonna try one last ditch effort to keep Cloud9 off the Nexus, but it's gonna go down! And Cloud9 take game one! Not just yet though, they can do a few more kills here at the end. Spirit will actually die, it's gonna be another ace right in the very final moment. But you were right, game number one does go to Cloud9 in the best of five but went on to lose a nail-biting game four in a heartbreaking base That's a bubble. No, just start to get out of it. No, no, no. 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 No, we can't end it. We can't end it. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Just here, just here. Yeah, we're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six seconds. Come on, 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 come on. I returned to NA, but he and Cloud9 weren't what they used to be. A wrist injury was making it harder for him to play, and C9 placed second in the 2015 NALCS Spring Playoffs, losing 3-1 to TSM. TSM needs to wait for their minions, and less Cloud9 over engage us. Here we go. Oh, the over engage indeed. Lemonation on the outside gets bounced. Dyrus, he wants it. Dives in onto balls. The Sanguine Pool saves him just at the last second. The 1v1 of Bjergsen and High. The bike goes down, but High is alive, and Bjergsen dies to the turrets. Turtle now is the focus. Depth charge into anchor toss. They lock him down with the passive, but he is hopping around way too much on Kalista. Turtle a double. Turtle a triple. Turtle a quadra. Could he be coming up with a penta? High stays on the Fountain, the quadra kill once again to come up with Team Solo Mid's pivotal win on the North American Spring Split. And they will do it once again. The consecutive wins for Team Solo Mid. High was becoming a relic. His unique shot calling style wasn't being adopted by other teams. His mechanics were falling behind and his wrist was hurting more and more. As you can see, I have like pain on my wrist and issues with that. So. Just like looking at the amount of solo queue games my teammates would play and the amount I could play, it just made me feel bad just because they're putting a lot of effort to try and get better. And I can't match that effort just because my body won't let me. So he decided it was time for a change. On April 22nd, 2015, Cloud9 announced that Hai had retired. Just a few days after losing to TSM in the playoffs. I don't know very many people in the world that are happy with being forced to retire from an injury 
where they still have the drive and the fire to keep competing, getting a retirement sent to you due to not being able to play is depressing in the sense that you're still good enough to play, you still want to play, people still want to play with you, but there are issues outside of your command, I guess, that is stopping you from doing it. That just sucks, to not be able to do what you love to do and are able to do because of something outside of the game. According to High's brother, High cried when he left the C9 house. He left the family he had built two years ago. He left the team he had led to victory time and time again. He left the crew that shocked the NALCS and the world. Cloud9 brought on Nikolai Incarnation Jensen to replace High in the mid lane, and C9 took the first game of the split off TSM. And now it surmounts to 15 to 9, 45 minutes in, over 100 CS behind. Incarnation held his breath in that mid lane, making sure he could make it to the mid, make it to the late with his team. Dyrus doing his damnedest here to shut down Cloud9, who already had the head to head against Team Solo mid, and look to stretch it just a little bit more. 45 minutes on the clock. TSM trying one last time to go for broke on the stoppage, and Cloud9 pick up the first win of the summer split over Team Solo Mid. But things got bad fast. Cloud9 were 3-7 and seven by week 5, putting them dangerously close to relegation. Where Cloud9 used to look like a well-oiled machine, they were now lost without High's shot calling. Meteos is still very much adapting to being the shot caller and kind of adapting to like know what to do in every situation and kind of having the kind of dominant voice that I did. Like, High was, first off, High was extremely loud, and he was also very, like, decisive in his calls. Like, it's like, do this shit right now, and very loud. Cloud9 needed to stave off relegation. Cloud9 needed someone to bring the team together and lead them to victory. Cloud9 needed High. During the LCS season where I wasn't playing, they weren't doing too well. I think they were like 2-6 or 2-8 or something like that when Jack messaged me. He didn't message me to ask me to sub in or to play or anything like that. He just wanted me to look over the scrims and watch their gameplay. But Medios wasn't feeling well at the time, I guess. So he asked if he could step down for one game. And Jack was like, you know, I know you haven't played jungle, I know you haven't played in a while, but if you're interested, we'd really appreciate if you sub in one game. The organization called in High for one last job. Meteos was benched, and High was back in the jungle, the position he played before qualifying for the NALCS. All of a sudden, it was clear exactly how much High shot calling mattered. The team was still lagging behind the rest of the league mechanically, but they managed to pick up three more wins, staving off relegations, and earning a spot in the regional finals. And it looks like they are going to be able to grab that seventh place in 32 minutes. Cloud9 take down Team 8. Hai had another shot at Worlds. It wasn't my decision to come back playing, but I knew all my teammates really wanted to go. Jack really wanted to go. Like, everyone worked hard. And like, there's no way I'm like gonna have my selfish needs or like wants rather to hold back the team. So I put that away and just put my best foot forward to try and bring us to Worlds. And I told Jensen that I would do my best to bring him to Worlds if he can carry me at Worlds. Right. So I did my job and now it's his turn to do his job. Cloud9 entered the gauntlet as the underdogs. Mechanically, the team was behind the curve. High had a wrist injury and he was playing a position he hadn't played professionally in years. But that didn't shake his confidence. All right, so. They lost our last game, and we won our last game, which just happened. So we have the momentum going with us. Hopefully we'll carry that through into the next game and complete our six step process. Step five is beat teammate in tiebreak, and then step six is world domination. We're a little far from there, you know, but it's a six, six step process getting there. C9 went down 2-0 against Gravity Gaming in their first series of the gauntlet. The first North American Regionals looks like it might be going to Gravity as they're 2-0 over Cloud9. They looked lost but High showed them the way. And they are able to come back from the 2-0, or I should say 0-2 that Gravity put them in, to go 3-2 versus Gravity in the first gauntlet game of the North American Summer Split. Cloud9 are moving on to take on Impulse. And then, 
he did it again. Here they go. Nexus turret number one. Where's the defense? It's not there. Impulse had to give up the base. They give up the game. They give up the series. Cloud9 get the reverse sweep, and they're going to face Team Liquid. Turret one is gone. Turret two under fire. Piglet's up in four. There's the knockouts, but there's the cash it's in. Be it. Sneaky takes him out. Quas is dead. On to the Nexus they go. A double for Sneaky. Piglet's back up, but Piglet's slowed down. Shockwave buys some time. Phoenix is one hit away, but cannot kill him off. Incarnation zones him out. That's going to be the Nexus. That's going to be the game. That's going to be a trip to the world championship for Cloud9. I brought you to world. <laughs> I came back and took a shaky, messy team all the way through the gauntlet and back to the international stage. At Worlds, people were ready to doubt Cloud9 and chalk their win up to luck. What I'm looking at when I think of AHQ, they play this very, like, they play like gamble. There's almost zero consistency in how they play, they always gamble. And I feel like this type of playstyle is good against the worst teams. As an LMS, they don't really have any, like, there's only the top two teams. And against Cloud9, I feel it's perfect because they are a just bad call team. Cloud All right, well, so, so... They are. They are a bad team, and that's how it is right now. And you can say, okay, they went through the gauntlet, that but too. at the same time, that was not a challenging gauntlet. I mean, the teams that were in that gauntlet had absolutely fallen apart by that point, and it was basically just Cloud9 picking up the pieces. But C9 got off to an incredible start with a 3-0 undefeated week, taking games off Fnatic, AHQ and Invictus Gaming. Would you believe it? This is the group where three teams could have taken first place, but it's Cloud9 who did it. The fourth that no one counted in. The seventh place North American LCS team. The Cinderella story is still alive. They are undefeated in the World Championship, and Cloud9 are three and zero. The team was pulling out surprise picks like Heis Lee Sin and Jensen's Vigar. Free fall? <laughs> but Vigar as well, I love this pick. This is like Christmas. So much. But they were playing with the swagger of the old Cloud9, the undefeatable Cloud9. Well, I came into this not thinking I was the underdog because for me, I need to think that we are the best team for me to make the calls that a winning team would do. So if you go into a game not thinking you're going to win, I'll, I'll probably make like a bad call and not like. I, I don't know, I just assume I'm better than them, even if we're not, so I can make the correct calls. But other teams in the group figured them out. All the shot calling in the world didn't make their second week easier, and Cloud9 lost four games in a row, including a tiebreaker, missing playoffs for the first time in the team's history. AHQ looking for the play, the Malfoidal does not matter, there is no damage, there is no base left, there is only victory for AHQ. One final dunk on the other side of the map, it's like he's playing Space Jam, and AHQ will be the final team out of Group B. High returned to NA, defeated but vindicated. His team got dismantled at Worlds, but he showed that he was the driving force behind most of their success. His micromanagement shot calling style completely changed the team, for better and worse. Hai was moved to support for the 2016 spring split, and Cloud9 said they were going to divide time between him and Michael Bunny Fufu Kurlienko. But after Bunny started in two losses that split, and they take down Cloud9, only giving up five kills. C9 started high for the rest of the games. It was, again, the shot calling. Without high, they were a mess. They fell down to ninth place without him and then decided they had to take out Meteos just to get high back in there on the team doing that shot calling. I mean, they had a 58% win rate with high that year and a 30% win rate without him. And even though they did the impossible with him in charge, Cloud9 needed to learn how to play without him. High was the mastermind behind the team, but he was also the crutch they kept leaning on. Cloud9 placed fifth, sixth in the playoffs that split. Better than they did without High, but a far cry from their former dominance. 30 minutes into the game, Team Solo Mid take the quarterfinal match against Cloud9. The team needed to lose him. They needed to rebuild and push High and his crew far away from their starting roster. High, Lemon Nation, and Balls were moved onto Cloud9's challenger roster. They were bumped down to the lower divisions. Their team could easily bulldoze the minor leagues and even earn an extra LCS pot that Cloud9 could sell. 
and then maybe do it all over again. Hai wasn't going to retire again. He knew he was good. He wanted to get back on stage. Just yesterday, I'm sitting in this chair right here. I'm watching Worlds. I'm seeing people play, and like, you know, it brings a bit of envy out of me. Whereas if I was a bit better at the game, I would be able to be there and play. And it's like a goal of like every player to be on that stage. And that's definitely still something that I want. C9C won the Challenger Series that split and earned that LCS spot. Once again, they leveraged their veteran experience to run circles around the younger players in the league. The Mimic is off cooldown. Cool there he goes. That's the ace. Nexus turret number one goes down. Seven seconds for GBM. Nexus turret number two being tanked by contract falls. Cloud9 Challenger on the Nexus are going to do it. Three to zero. They get that spot in the LCS. What a dominant performance from Cloud9 as they make it a clean sweep. Lemon and Balls wanted back in. They wanted another chance to prove that they were worth it. But Hai? Hai claimed he was ready to retire. I feel kind of old, you know, my wrist kind of hurt, my back kind of hurts, and uh, I've played a lot already, but for my teammates, I'm pretty sure all four of them want to continue playing. I think they want to play on a team together, so maybe you'll see those four with someone else, but I I'm getting old, man. That is, until the right offer came around. I think I might have said that I wasn't interested in playing, and that is true to an extent. It's more about who I was going to play for and who with. If there was a good group of team or a good group of players and an organization that I felt as if I could believe in, I could definitely see myself playing. But at the time, you know, I, I couldn't see myself necessarily leaving Cloud9 at the time. And after qualifying, Jack came to me and told me I had this opportunity to help build a new organization, which is now FlyQuest. A new organization that bought Cloud9's second LCS spot for the 2017 season. Hai had finally left Cloud9, but this time, he did it with his friends. He wasn't forced off. FlyQuest may not have had a spectacular 2017, but they were a respectable middle-of-the-pack team built on veteran knowledge and high shot calling. By the time 2018 rolled around, it seemed impossible that High would stick around again. The franchised NALCS brought in new team owners, plenty of cash, and star players from around the world. And yet, there was High, now leading the Golden Guardians. Golden Guardians got off to an even worse start than FlyQuest, but that doesn't necessarily tarnish High's career. At this point, it seems unlikely that High will ever leave the LCS. At least, not until he literally can't play anymore. When am I gonna retire? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Well, you see, mm -hmm. that has to be a secret because one, I don't even know the answer to that. <laughs> I, I got enough to put you there, dude. Who knows, when I get tired of the game or when I don't want to play anymore, but for now, I want to play and I still like playing, so. Hai is the mastermind behind C9, NA's most famous and infamous shot caller, and the guy who just can't quit. He's risen, fallen, returned, and qualified for the LCS twice. He's led three teams, won two championships, and he's still hanging on. Hai might be the most tenacious person in League of Legends, and he's not going anywhere. It's time to make building your champions easier. Introducing the Score Esports new builds calculator, which allows you to plug in items and runes to figure out which builds give you the best stats. The new builds page also gathers information on what the top players and your favorite pros are building, so you'll be able to try them out yourself. Take control of your champion and try out the new feature on the Score Esports builds website by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.